Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to transfer polypaint data from your ZBrush into Maya. So it's a really useful step of the process inside the games industry. It's the bridge between those two softwares. So some of you might not have very clean meshes. So I'm also gonna show you how we can basically prepare that, the perfect FBX to transfer into different softwares. On YouTube, you're gonna see a lot of people talking about no UVs. This is a really bad workflow because it's baking the information into the model. And then you just have really big file sizes sizes you can't change the textures and trust me on this one it's really bad okay so before we get to the polypaint transfer itself into Maya I'll get you an understanding of what polypaint is used for inside of the industry so very rarely would polypaint actually be used for final textures we use it as basically like a concepting for the model getting a better sense of where textures are going to be it's a really interesting ways to use it as well I also use it as a guidance system for retopology flow so if you're interested in that entire world there's a video on how I created this with the perfect animation loops further to that if you're interested in retopology, there's three retopology PDFs that you can download to master retopology with this little paintbrush so you can activate that on and off. I'm going to show you how to do poly painting in its fullest. That's not what this video is for. But if you just want to experiment with it, if you go to BPA in the paintbrush, change the alpha to something like a strokes and a dot. This is a very common technique for doing skin, for example. So we're going to get ZBrush to auto-generate some UVs, extract the textures onto those UVs, and then import it into Maya really is the best way to do it. So if you do have a base mesh, this is going to be a lot easier. However, I know a lot of you might be starting from something like a DynaMesh. So I'm going to show you how to process all that without pre-made base mesh. So to pre-prepare your model, first thing you want to do is come down to layers and just make sure that everything's baked down. I suggest going to the highest geometry subdivisions and then clicking delete lower. I've done that just to show you what it's going to be like if you don't have a base mesh. Next, we'll go down to the layers. Make sure that all the layers are activated that you want. So say, for example, sometimes I have a mouth opening layer. So this is really useful for baking and using inside of rigs for the games industry. For this, I'll close the mouth just because I know it'll be close to what you guys have. So with your layers, click bake all. So now we we have this mesh it could be a disgusting dyna mesh a tessellation it's got no subdivisions and it also has no layers so first we're going to create a new base mesh from this so i'm going to come down to sub tools and click duplicate come down to the rename button and rename it sub d just going to make it much easier to understand it's a good habit to get into so with the second mesh that we created if you come down to z remesher you'll have to play around with the target polygon count it's going to change depending on your mesh so after clicking Z Remesher, it's created this mesh out of our second duplicate. It doesn't have to be anything fantastic. So say, for example, there's a couple of errors here. That doesn't matter. We're just using it to transfer over to Maya. If you want to preview the wireframe, you can click Draw Polyframes Toggle. That's going to toggle it on and off. And just so we can get our bearings, we have our first mesh, which is your mesh that you want to transfer. And now we've created this new mesh. The only thing is it doesn't have a set of UVs to collect that polypaint data. So thankfully, we don't have to unwrap it ourselves there's some automated processes so if you come into the top right under z plugins click this top left little button here that's going to dock it to one of your sides scroll down to the bottom and then under uv master we're going to expand this and you'll see that there's a button that says unwrap so just hold there i wouldn't hit that straight away there's a good habit that i want you guys to get into so first we're going to hit this button that says work on clone now in the top right if you look we have different tools here we have our original and it's also created a second version which is a clone so the reason it's done this, we can mess around and break this model and it's not going to affect our main project. So once we've got that clone, the one we can mess around with, come back to the left hand side and now we can press unwrap. So you know the process is happening because in the top left, it will say unwrap. I just paused in there just in case it was lagging my OBS. You see it's successfully done, it says current sub tool unwrapped one and it says how many islands are there. So where you can preview it is if you come down to flatten, it's going to flatten the mesh out and it shows you what it split it into. So this is a really bad unwrap for any sort sort of real-time project maybe okay for a movie project but again games guys remember that this can't go into a game this is just to collect some polypaint data and it's far far better than anything that anyone else uses in terms if you've heard of gpu tiles this is more workable we can draw on top of it super useful for polypaint data this is why uvs are so important so just look around make sure there's no glaring errors you just want basically like flat geometry no sort of twisted overlaps and with that second sub d mesh selected we can come back to the left side and then 
and paste these UVs. So you'll see that it's load. It's a bit worrying because it doesn't show you or tell you that it's been successful, but a way to double check that it's transferred successfully, you can come back to flatten and then we can see that it's successfully been applied. Okay, so now that second mesh is nicely prepped. We're going to transfer all the details and all the poly paint data to this second mesh. So the first thing you want to do is under sub tools is expand this and just make sure that you've only got these two meshes visible by clicking the eye. So you see I've got some random sub tools here and they're all hidden so far. So that's important because that's what ZBrush is going to read when it comes to the projection. So on the first mesh, I'm just going to make a note of how many active points there are. So it's 6.8 million. That basically indicates the resolution of the poly paint data because the poly paint data right now is attaching itself to vertices. So I won't get too into that, but just think about that being the texture resolution almost as well as the geometry resolution. So on the second mesh, what we'll do is we're going to divide this a couple of times. And because it's Z remeshed, it's all in quad. So it's going to divide nicely. You can activate poly frames to see what's going on. And basically we're going to click divide until we're roughly at the same level as our first mesh. So you see, we've actually almost nailed it on the point here. It's 6.3 million. So we know that the text transfer is going to work really well. So still with that second one selected, we can now come to project all. And once we click this project all button, ZBrush is going to look at how many eyes are open and it's going to transfer all that detail back over. And because these are identically overlapping, you'll see that I switched between them. It's all going to work out perfectly. Okay, so now that's completed. We click on the sub D, you'll see that it's exactly the same as the first mesh. Only this time we have all those nice subdivisions and we also have that nice unwrap. Okay, so next we're going to attach this poly paint data to that UV unwrap. So on the right side, if you go down to UV map, we currently have our UV map size 2048. So you can put that up and down depending on what sort of resolution you want. And here we're going to create our texture. So you see that the first button is new from poly paint. So once we click that, you'll see that all the poly paint data has been pasted onto our UV set. So now this mesh is ready to be exported into Maya. So to export, ZBrush doesn't make it easy. If you come up to Z plugins or Z plugins and under FBX export and import, we're going to export the selected. So our second mesh. And the important one we want here is we want to embed the maps into the mesh, the FBX. So the nice thing about that is you don't have to export all the textures individually. You just work with one individual file, which is an FBX, and then it can be used across multiple 3D software. You also have your texture formats. I would keep these as standard TGAs and TIFFs. Those are basically like games industry transparent ready. So next coming into my, you should be used to this one by now. So file import. For the import, you can keep all the settings the same. I've just expanded these just in case you've changed them accidentally. And with the FBX file, you'll see that there's another folder. And within that folder is our texture map. So this is a physical asset that we can adjust and change. So this is why it's way, way better than vertex painting it and then using that really high poly vertex decimated model. It's just a very bad workflow. So this is a nice way to do it. So we select the mesh that we had. You see that my bad name conventions there. Okay, so your model should come in like this. This is where people usually get a little bit scared, but we just need to change some my settings. So if you come to this side of the tabs, you'll see a little circle with checkers. If you activate that, it's going to show the texture that's applied to the model. So if you click on the model itself, a really useful thing is on the side stack, if you scroll all the way to the end, you can actually see tab where the material or the texture has been applied. You'll probably notice that it's a little lighter than usual. And that's just because we're using a fong in Maya. We won't get into all the materials. We'll say that for another video, but you guys are probably most interested in some Arnold rendering. So these are all the AI ones. So what you can do is just change this to AI standard surface. And when you click that, you'll see that it's changed to back to gray. So all we have to do is reconnect that texture. So under the colors, we hit the label color, which is the checker map. We then come and select the file, come to the right side and then click this little folder button. Navigate to where your FBX is stored. And if you remember, we talked about that folder, which contains the texture. So it's always a good idea to actually come and physically hook in your source materials. It's a good habit to get into as well. Press OK, and then you can see it's applied. So now you've got the perfect head retopology guidance system. We're ready to take that inside of Maya and then start drawing retopology on top of it. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to set that all up. There's plenty of videos out there on how to do head retopology. But if you're feeling a little bit uncomfortable or would like a step-by-step -step process going through the entire retopology process, I create a member series that does just that. So check it out if you're interested. There's also tons and tons of advanced videos on other parts of retopology that you're not going to find on public YouTube. But if you're not ready for that just yet, definitely check out this next video on setting things up and maybe attempt some head retopology yourself. So thanks for watching and I will catch you on one of those videos.